I finally made the video. <laughs> so, y'all might be wondering why it took me so long to actually make the first video in this series, considering I have to make a hundred of these, reviewing every single game I play. Well, as I started this challenge, I expected to be able to, you know, just play through some of the games I loved, learn the new editing software I got, and really start to put in a lot of work in this. But then as I got through the recording and I got through editing and I learned about file formatting, I realized that that kind of stuff ain't for me. So what did I do? I recorded this five months later. <laughs> Oh, it has been a while. So yeah, let's just jump right into it. And I'll review Alvin and the Chipmunks the Squeakle for the DS. Gotta hate the fact that I played this game. So, with this, this fabulous game, as I played through it, I realized some games just exist to be a cash grab. And honestly, that is fine. That is perfectly fine. In just my game library, I have a lots of games that are just simply there for merchandising purposes. And that's just how gaming will be. As long as movies is, exist, studios will try to make games to coincide with them in order to bring a wider audience in. But this is a particularly egregious case of this. Now, my problems with Alvin and the Chipmunks of Squeakle for the DS start with the gameplay. Now, Alvin and the Chipmunks is, if you didn't know, God bless your soul, I'm about to ruin your entire life right now. Alvin and the Chipmunks is... A series based on a trio of chipmunk brothers that can sing for some reason really don't understand why they ever existed and as such the only logical game genre that you can make of that movie series is well a rhythm game and the problem comes when you make a rhythm game that doesn't follow its own rhythm now, I played through this game, I think, three times in the time span of me announcing this and me making this video and publishing it. And in each time I played through the game, one of them was a world record temporarily. You can check that out on my channel. I'm now second place. But, you know, I'm not salty. And each time I played through the game, I didn't enjoy it because the gameplay didn't feel meaningful. You'd be playing along to songs like Macarena, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, stuff like that, and no matter the tune, the movements on the bottom touchscreen would just be so sporadic. And that's okay to an extent. I understand with some of the earlier songs, bringing players in and helping them really understand what's going on with the game, it makes sense that the beat that the rhythm of the game won't really go along with the song. But as you reach the end of the game, it becomes especially prevalent that they had no idea why they had these particular movements where they did. As you go to the final song of the game, which just so happens to be, to be the Macarena, you'll be going through and just think of the tune in your head as, I don't want to get copyright striked. And just imagine that, but also imagine you holding your DS and just going <laughs> And that was my experience every single time with the final level of that game. It's terrible, I know. Now, you may be wondering, hey Tol, you played through the story mode of this game, right? So. The story must have some sort of merit to it in order for it to exist. And I would agree with you 
if it wasn't this game, because I swear I have no idea what the story was. I'm honestly clueless. If somebody can recap the story for me in the comments, I will be definitely grateful. Because I spent like two hours of my life playing this game. And I don't know what happened. Why are we suddenly in Orlando, California? Why did we go to Tokyo? Across the Atlantic? Across Europe? Just to end up back in America, but on the other coast? What happened? And I think that's a huge problem. That's a huge problem if your game is so unintelligently designed that somebody who spent a lot of time playing through the game still has no idea what happened. What did they pay those storyboard writers for? What's up with that? Now, I'll try to take a more positive spin on the other games, but there are some games out there that are just objectively bad. Like, you can't... You can't watch my speedrun of this game and tell me that this game actually was good and actually had merit. I mean, I guess you can, you do have the ability to, but you wouldn't be right. Now, of course, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but my very strong opinion that this game isn't good. It didn't take advantage of the DS's capabilities. Yes, it used the touchscreen, but it didn't use it effectively. It just made you break your touchscreen just because it wanted you to play the game, not because it wanted you to enjoy the experience. And that's about all I have to say about this game. It's honestly disappointing to me that a game like this exists. But I mean, I'll give Cash Grabs one more shot with Cars 2 for the DS in the next video, but as it stands, this game, I'm honestly going to have to give it a 0 out of 10. It, it's not good. At all. Don't play this game. This, as it stands right now, I'll try to rank all 100 of the games I play, and as of right now, this isn't even number one, it's number 100. That's it. I'll see you all in the next review.